I'm gonna show you one move on your one-handed backhand that 99% of pros use, and that after you learn it, you'll never look at the one-handed backhand the same again. Because there's just one move, if you start doing with your one-handed backhand after watching this video, we will change your one-handed backhand forever. And I know, that's a bold promise, but I'm gonna deliver. And just to be clear, I'm not talking about mimicking Roger Federer or Stan or some other great one-handed backhand here. This is a fundamental move that if you start doing, it'll have the same effect on your one-handed backhand too. So make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because I'm gonna show you one of my favorite drills that allows you to have both drive and spin on the ball to have a heavy one-handed backhand. Now, one of the biggest problems that most players face when they're trying to hit a one-handed backhand is they don't know how to create a both powerful and controlled swing. They either have a lot of power that's out of control or they feel like their swing is very muscled and they're not strong enough to hit a one-handed. So what they think they need to do is get either stronger and muscle the ball more, resulting in more injuries, but really what's happening is you don't know how to leverage the racket the right way. But before we can even talk about that one problem, we gotta fix one major thing that so many players struggle with, which is the grip. The grip is so important because it does two things. It provides stability, so making sure that you don't hurt your wrist or your elbow, hence why a lot of players have tennis elbow with one-handers because they're overusing it. And it helps you have a good swing path, making sure that the contact and the swing through the ball can get the ball to go where you want it. So first I want to look at some grips that I wouldn't recommend. Grip number one is the Eastern forehand grip. I see this a lot, where players have basically a forehand grip and they think, well, I'm just gonna turn my racket just like this and try to hit a ball. This is gonna put tons of stress on your wrists and your elbow. And notice when I do this, the swing path is really all over the place. There's not gonna be a way for you to develop a good one-handed backhand with an Eastern forehand grip. Now, the key that I like to think of when I'm thinking about a grip is not actually the pad. So many players and coaches are thinking about, okay, where's this pad go on the racket? That's great for locating where your hand's gonna go, but the more important thing is what I call stability. Again, remember, the grip is to create stability in the wrist and the arm so you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. So what I mean by is, I think about the hook of my thumb. This little hook right here that I'm holding on is so important because that's what's gonna resist the force and allow you to resist the force in a way that doesn't compromise your wrist or your elbow. So let me show you. When I look at a continental grip, because some players do use a continental grip, where the grip's like this. If I think about the position, my knuckle's more around flat one, going to the right side here, where I can now kind of like swing through the ball, but if I put a lot of pressure here, my thumb or the hook of my thumb is a little too high. And so what happens here when I do this, it puts strain or puts more stress on my wrist. So this is possible. A lot of players used to hit backhands like this and this works. But if you're dealing with balls that have a lot of spin, a lot of penetration, Generally, these type of players will probably end up slicing more balls than actually hitting over it. And I want you to learn how to hit over it. The next grip is Eastern backhand grip. Now notice how, when we talk about these grips, it's taking my knuckle more around, hence taking my thumb more behind the racket, or behind the strings of the racket. This is important because when my knuckle or this hook is behind the strings of my racket, what it's gonna do is help prevent the racket okay but in a way that secures my wrist so now in an eastern backhand grip as i push on the racket there's no real compromise in the wrist because it's kind of already in a locked position it's in a strong position and notice how my arm can be straight where like on the eastern uh forehand grip my elbow would be bent so now i would be doing stuff with my elbow putting too much stress there the next grip is a semi-western backhand grip this is a grip that you might use when you play on a clay court or balls that are a little bit higher in your strike zone. It puts the hook a little bit further under, allowing you to deal with higher balls in the strike zone. I'm kind of in between these two grips. The biggest thing you wanna understand is focusing on that hook being behind the racket, allowing you basically to resist the forces without having to bend the elbow and keeping the arm in this nice extended position. This is gonna be the key for you, making sure that as we start talking about the one move that you need to know how to do efficiently, that your grip isn't gonna break down. So now you understand how to hold the racket. Let's go take a look at some of the best one-hander backhands in the world. And I want you to look for this one specific move that I'm gonna highlight they're gonna do. Then I'm gonna break it down so I can show you how to do it so your one-handed backhand can go to the next level. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at some of my favorite pros and look at their one-handed backhands so you can start seeing the pattern. As we look at Roger Federer here, he's entering this position here. I call this the leverage position right here. And this is what you're gonna look for for every stroke that we're looking. If you look at Stefano Sissipas, you see he hits this same leverage position right here. This is a key marker to having a great one-handed backhand. When we look at Stan the Man, you can see that same key leverage position right here. Looking at Richard Gasquet, hits that same position here. When we look at Diane Perry, Again, we see that same position. Dominic Team, same position. And when we look at the great backhand of Justine Hennen, you're gonna see that same position. 
So now let's go figure out what we're looking at and how we can start implementing it in our games. Now that you see what all the pros are doing, let me explain what you're seeing. You're seeing leverage in action. It's like physics, but we're not gonna make it that complicated. And so when I think about leverage, I think about a hammer. That's my best analogy, or an ax, how you would use that. You have this hammer, or you have the head of the hammer or ax here, this is kind of the resistance. You have this lever right here, and you have the fulcrum at the bottom. And so what this means is, if I take the fulcrum and add force to the handle, the head moves faster, okay? And that's what they're doing with a one-handed backhand. They're basically taking the same action but doing it on the side. So now, the fulcrum is a little different. The fulcrum's actually the shoulder, okay? We have a good secure grip, and then when I position the racket in the, in the right way, the fulcrum drives the racket forward. This is one of the biggest mistakes that so many players make. They never get into a strong grip position, and then they try to push the head of the racket forward. Basically, they're not using the correct leverage force. Notice how the speed difference. When I pull both the head and the hand forward just like this, they're moving at the same rate, okay? I don't get any advantages. But when I have my racket set up in this position and I leverage from the shoulder, now look how fast the racket moves, okay? And then I can add more force and get more output from the racket face. The more you can create racketed speed with your one-handed backhand by leveraging, it's gonna seem so much easier. So now we're gonna start some drills to get you going on how to create more leverage force in your one-handed backhand. So the very first thing we wanna do is start off with an Eastern backhand grip, or whatever grip you chose that allows you to resist in a natural way without having to kind of flex or do anything with your, uh, your wrist or your arm, which generally means straight. Now from here, the key is this. If this is my hammer, I'm gonna point it basically to the nail and I'm gonna pull down. Now notice it's pointing at the target with the butt of the racket or the, my uh, hammer and I'm pulling down and the head goes into place. This is what I want you to understand. So when the ball's coming to you, what we wanna do is make sure that the butt of the racket is pointing to where you're gonna make contact so you can drive it forward, okay? So how do we do this? First, we're gonna start with understanding horizontal, horizontal abduction. Sounds crazy, but it's really simple. All I want you to do is take your arm and put it straight in front of you like this. And I'm gonna have my palm facing to the back or to the left for me right now. All I'm gonna do is pull it, boom. We're gonna do 90 degrees. I'll do it from this direction, pull it here. This is horizontal shoulder abduction, okay? Practice this a couple times. This is really important. Once we practice this a couple times, what we wanna do now is simply have a racket put it in our Eastern type backhand grip or whatever grip we chose, and we're gonna do that natural motion. Now here's the key. When I do horizontal abduction, my hand is actually going in a semi-circle. It's not going straight, it has to stop. It's going in a semi-circle. This is what you want. And so with that, if I set my racket on the side, grab my racket and have where right now the butt of the racket is facing forward, no problem, and do that horizontal abduction, look what happens. I'm driving the racket head into the contact without pulling it forward this way. This is leveraging from the wrist. We don't wanna do that. We wanna leverage from the shoulder. And so the next thing is we wanna create a longer runway. And what I mean by a longer runway, if you watch from this angle, if I have my racket pointing straight ahead, my racket's gonna travel from here to here to get to contact. But now if I have my racket pointing to the actual ball where it's gonna come, Look how the runway just got longer. From here, we're gonna do horizontal shoulder abduction, but have the racket pointing slightly up to the ball and pull the racket slightly up to contact. This is the pattern of movements I want you to start practicing. Simply pulling from here to here. And I know you're probably saying, hey, there's no follow through, there's nothing else, but getting used to setting the racket here and pulling here. Good note, you can use your left hand to start pulling that racket back. And this one move is so important because now you're leveraging from the shoulder and accelerating the racket much faster than you ever would have if you did something else or leverage from a different position. Again, this leads back to the number one mistake a lot of players are making. They're either leveraging from the wrist this way, weak, maybe from the elbow, and sometimes players have to do that, but ideally you wanna leverage from the shoulder here. Now. We're gonna do a couple times where I'm just gonna drop feed myself so you can see exactly what's gonna happen. So now you can see I have my butt of the racket position away from the court and I'm gonna simply drop the ball where I'm pointing the butt of the racket and pull it forward and stop, okay? You can see how from here I'm just going stop and it's already generating quite a bit of pace without any extra effort because I'm using physics, aka leveraging from the shoulder here. Now. There's a couple more bonus things I wanna talk about that are so important to really take this to the next level, which is rotation. Because you might be wondering, 
Should I rotate the ball or is it just my shoulder? You should rotate, but here's one of the biggest mistakes so many players make because they don't understand this leverage position. When I'm in this leverage position, pulling the racket forward, you can see how it makes a line where the butt of the racket or the, the head of the racket is going to travel, boom, to contact. Now watch what happens when I open my shoulders too much. I take my racket completely off that line. This is one of the biggest issues where so many players are trying to rotate and they start taking it and opening up too much. And this is that problem that so many of you might be facing right now. We're going to fix it in one second. So if I have this and I'm really confident with this, what I really want to do is start here and then take my shoulder and then rotate or coil more. Knowing that I need to get my shoulder to this position, which is that line we just practiced. And this is why it's so important to make sure you practice this position first so you know how this feels to have your racket going through that line. And when I say line, the head of the racket is traveling in this array, but the actual handle is coming across my body and up. So when this happens, now I can rotate, okay, even deeper, and then pull my shoulder into the line and then have my racket go out. And so the difference is now I'm going to go here, I'm going to rotate more, and you can see what happened. As I rotate and coil and uncoil, I'm making sure that I don't open up too much. You can see what happens when I start opening up too much. It pulls the racket off the line. It starts traveling off to this corner as my shoulder starts to hinge there. And we don't want that. We want to make sure that we take all this power and we rotate, boom. And you can see, I'm not even taking a huge backswing, which is a whole nother story. But we want to stay focused on this move. And how you get there, it might be different for everybody. And that's why you see different styles of one-handed backhand, where they take it back like this, where they go like this, where they you know, do all kinds of different things. Gasquet does this. But the key is they all get to this leverage position, making sure they hit through the ball. Now I'm going to put it all together. Basically, I'm going to toss the ball in the air. I'm going to coil and wait for the opportunity to uncoil and then leverage my shoulder. Here, coil. You can see how much power I can develop by leveraging. Now, what's going to happen when I follow through? As my arm goes out, you have a couple options. You can externally rotate or pronate my forearm or shoulder. So what happens is I'm making contact, and as I keep going, I'm going to rotate the racket out. The reason for this is if I don't and I just do this, look how the racket has to stop there. If the racket has to stop here, it has to slow down here. We don't want that. We want to keep accelerating through contact, right? So if I do this, it stops. Or I can maybe go this, and, but it's still pretty jerky and stops. And so what I have is when I'm going through the contact, after I'm finished, I'm going to allow my shoulder to rotate over. And now look how it can keep and maintain that speed. Even though I'm doing this, I don't have to do it through contact. Now you're probably saying, OK, Kevin, you promised me a drill. You promised me a drill to make the ball really heavy. Now let's walk up to the net and I'm going to show you one of my favorite drills that you can start doing to add that heavy one-handed backhand spin to your back. This is one of my favorite drills that I like doing with my students and I do it. It's really helping you develop the feel for drive and spin because a lot of players when they're here, if they're doing the right swing, they'll just kind of brush over the ball. Okay, and so you get all this brush but you don't get on the spin. What the key for this drill is making sure that the butt of the racket is looking at the ball. That's always going to be key because it sets the grip up and it puts your shoulder in that leverage position. From here, we're going to pull the racket forward and both drive and come up through the contact. So it's going to look like that. Okay, so that's a pretty heavy ball. And you want to do multiple balls. Like you see coaches on, on TV and drills doing stuff like this because they're developing up. And so it is a feel. Ooh, that was a good one. It's a feel for how much drive versus spin. And this is really important to develop because the more you can develop this action, the more you can get yourself out of trouble if the ball's low. Now, here's the other thing. Sometimes you don't need that much spin. And so we want to start tossing it higher and driving through the ball and driving through the ball and driving through the ball. And notice the difference. When I really want to drive, I'm going to pull the racket around on that horizontal shoulder abduction more than having the racket come up. There's no one or the other. It's what you need when you need it. So if someone tells you never pull up or never go straight, it's never or never. Because if you watch the best pros, they have to deal with so many situations there's never a constant situation to deal with. Now, if you like this video and you want me to make a full tutorial on how to hit your backhand from A to Z, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to take the rest of your game to the level, I think this is the next video you should watch.